Can you calculate volumes from photogrammetric data without using ground control points? Recently in the comments, this question was asked, and I thought it's important for us to take a closer look. My feeling is that so long as you process your data adequately well, yes, you will get a good volume, but there's no sense in thinking or having feelings about it. So let's take a look at the processing. The first thing I'm going to do is go about processing a data set without making use of the ground control points. We're then going to derive a volume and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. After that, we will rerun the entire process using all of the same settings, not one will be changed, except in that case, we will apply the GCPs, perform all of their measurements. And once we've reproduced the data, we're going to take a look and see if there's any difference in the volumetric calculation. So as you can see on the screen at the moment, I'm just very quickly running through my standard processing procedure. And if you'd like more details on how I do this, please check the video that's posted in the link above. So normal process here, we align our photos, we take a look at the type points that are derived. We want to go about cleaning them up, making sure that there aren't any erroneous points because regardless of whether we are using ground control points or not, we always want to produce the cleanest data set that we can. So here I am filtering. And again, in that reference video, you'll see why we filter, how we filter and the benefits of doing so. Always be sure to save your project in case anything happens midway through processing. We're now producing the dense point cloud because we're going to use the dense point cloud to produce a DEM and it is from the DEM that we will be calculating our volumes. On screen now is the volume that we will be measuring later on. So we narrow down the area. There's no need for us to create a DEM for the entire area in this case. So this is only a demonstration and it makes things run a lot faster. And there you have it. Soon enough, the DEM is created and we can go about computing our volumes. So there's the volume that we want to calculate. Remember that whenever drawing the shape around a volume, you want to try and do it on a surface that is as flat as possible. As soon as there are too many lumps and bumps and undulations, it's just going to interfere with your calculation and give you false results. So draw the shape nice and neatly around the area that you want to compute your volume for, and then we can go about measuring the volume. Remember, Agisoft has quite a few nice little tools to add or remove vertices as you are drawing the shapes. The I button on your keyboard will allow you to add a vertex, and the R button when pressed will allow you to remove the closest vertex to where your mouse is at that time. So our shape is drawn. We want, now want to look at the profile. Remember, we're always looking for a profile that is as flat as possible. Over here, there is some vertical exaggeration applied to this graph, but if we have a look at the values, we see it's nothing too dramatic. And of course, in this case, we're using the shape to compute volumes with and without GCP. So an error in the one will be reflected in the other anyway. So there we've calculated the volume nice and easily. Let's put it into our Excel spreadsheet. And this is where we'll be drawing the comparison. At the end, we're going to be looking at the difference percentage once we've calculated the second volume with GCPs. And obviously for any projects, your client or you yourself might have a target value for a percentage difference. So we're going to see how close we can get to zero in this case, if we can get close to zero at all, considering the difference in using GCPs and not. So here's the second run of processing. I'm now adding the GCPs in. It's so just loading them in, making sure we're using the correct coordinate system. By the way, this is a data set downloaded from the Pix4D samples. It's not one of my own. So it's a nice independence check on the data as well. So I'm about to go ahead and add all the GCPs. This is just really sped up. There's no sense in making anyone watch someone add GCPs into a project. It's quite a boring procedure, as I'm sure you already know. Just remember when adding GCPs, you always want to zoom in nice and close. You want to get 
to the center of that mark. There's no sense in being zoomed out just because it might be a little bit faster. So be sure to zoom in, take your time. Don't do it in a haphazard fashion. Quality is always very important when we are processing quality, accuracy, and precision. As you can see, GCPs are applied and we've got a decent residual. As I say, this isn't my own data, so I can't speak for the accuracy we've achieved here, but it's still pretty good and I think acceptable for most survey projects, certainly for volume calculations. But there we have it. GCPs are applied. We're going to reset our region and produce the dense point cloud once again. As I said, we're using the same settings. There's no change from the original method of processing, just so that it is a fair comparison from one data set to the next. And there you go, a nice, pretty dense point cloud has been created. Doesn't look very different from the first one, but we didn't expect it to anyway. And I'm going to go ahead and clean that up as I normally would, just because we always want good, clean data. So again, following the same procedure, now that we have cleaned the dense point cloud, we are going to resize the region just so that it speeds things along and then produce the DEM for this data set. And then we can calculate our volume once again. Yes, that looks good enough for a DEM, so let's produce it. You'll see the resolution is unchanged from the first round of data processing, which is good. It tells us that we don't have any large scale offsets from our original method of processing. So it looks like our methodology has treated us well, and we don't expect major differences, but let's not say too much before we have the actual results. So there you are, the DEM is produced and it's time to compute the volume. To start off, I'm going to use the exact same shape so that there can be no discrepancy. Keep in mind that this shape was drawn on the DEM of the previous data set. So there could be Z differences if we didn't process our first data set accurately. But let's see what the actual result is in this case. Profile, of course, is going to be very similar because it is from our previous shape. But those are the results from the volume. Let's put them into Excel and let's compare. Is there any difference when using GCPs versus not using GCPs? And Excel doesn't lie. And if we look at the percentage that's calculated, 1.7 odd percent, a little bit under 2%. percent so i am not sure what values you are accustomed to working with, but I know for the vast majority of my clients, anything below 3, sometimes 5% is perfectly acceptable in terms of variances. But let's keep it fair. I'm going to redraw the shape now so that the shape is based on this stem and not on my previous stem. Perhaps the shape is causing the uh, data to be as good as what we saw in Excel. So here I am redrawing the shape again, just trying to keep the profile as flat as possible. But what will the difference be with a new shape on a data set with GCPs? There we go, the shape is drawn. Go to measure, we view our profile, very, very similar, very similar, no difference at all. And the volume, the numbers are looking quite similar as well. But I'm going to translate these into Excel again and see if the value becomes any better or worse. And it's improved just over 1%. So there you have it. It just goes to show that so long as you process your data 
correctly and very carefully, GCPs will make no differences to volume calculations because volume calculations are a relative thing. Thanks for watching. If this has been helpful at all to you, please would you do me a favor and like the video and become one of my subscribers. Trying to build this up to help the geospatial community all become better data processors and users.